Hey guys, what's up? So it's been about a month since I have put out another video. Um, we are officially in the third trimester and I cannot believe it. It is going by so, so fast. At least now it is. Um, so just to start off, it's summer. It's really, really hot. I mean, it feels like summer already. It's been like in the 80s and the 90s. And if you aren't pregnant or um, you didn't realize, pregnancy and heat do not mix well very, very good. It's just, it makes you feel gross and icky and awful. Yeah. Also, a couple more updates. I'm not in his nursery anymore. I'm currently in our kitchen. Uh, I was feeling good today, which is pretty good. Feeling good, uh, not looking my best, but feeling good. And I was like, might as well just pull out the camera and record the second trimester update for you guys. I wanted to, to record it last week, but um, last week, my husband, myself, and my two dogs, you guys know we have two dogs, you guys know of my big dog, um, we got attacked by two pit bulls. We were just walking the dogs, and somehow I ended up on the ground. It was the craziest thing I think I've ever gone through. Um, they raced the garage. Two pit bulls just charged at my dogs. We were just walking them on a leash like normal in our neighborhood. And if you can't tell, my knees look worse, but um, I got pretty banged up. So I ended up going into labor and delivery um, pretty much immediately. Uh, baby's fine. They monitored him for a good hour, hour and a half just to make sure everything was okay. And then we also took my dogs to the vet and they are okay so it was only the big dog that got bit but he got bit several different places thank god he's on antibiotics and it could have just been a lot worse it was just it was a mess so anyway so i didn't get to record the video last week so i thought while i am here i will go ahead and record the video since i'm finally feeling better better and i'm finally healing because this looks significantly better than what it did a week ago Anyway, so I have my update. So the second trimester, oops, second trimester um, probably was one of my, it was the favorite so far. Um, so third trimester, insulin resistance kicked in uber hard, um, very fast. And so second trimester, you're not puking your guts out anymore. Um, you are becoming more insulin resistant, but it's not to the point of the third trimester. At least mine wasn't. So just to go, you know, kind of with what my notes say and stuff, I have my little book here. And according to this, the second trimester starts on week 14. So on week 14, um, I don't know if you guys have really watched my, um, my first trimester. I haven't had many cravings. Uh, I just had a lot of food aversions when I was pregnant in the first trimester and a lot of things I couldn't hold down. So second trimester, food actually tasted good, which is amazing. And it's like this entire pregnancy, I've craved Reese's, at least starting in the second trimester. So that was a, for week 14, I craved Reese's. I did go to the high risk OB. I was going every two weeks, um, you know, by week 14. And um, the heart rate was 147, baby was healthy, and they conform, conformed, confirmed it was a boy. Uh, we saw it on the ultrasound, and we got to go to Tennessee that weekend. Uh, one of the things that, happened to me in the first trimester is I was a little overweight whenever I became pregnant. And so during the first trimester when I couldn't really eat anything or eating a lot of portions, I lost about 10 pounds. Um, and so I didn't really start gaining weight. Okay, so I'm almost 30 weeks. I'm 29, day, 29 weeks and like five days. And since I've lost the 10 pounds, I've only gained like four. So even in the second trimester, I didn't really gain any weight. Um, so going on to like week 15, uh, we finally announced on social media and that was really cool just to kind of experience. Um, again, I was um, nervous to announce it. If you've gone through a loss before, it's always nerve wracking to announce that you're pregnant on social media. So we did there, we did do that. Also, I was craving like lasagna, which being diabetic, you know, noodles, notification noodles and pasta aren't the best thing for you so there's that but then you have the nausea exhaustion back pain headaches and I could feel him moving around a lot which is really good same thing with the insulin pump so my sugar stayed pretty stable um, for the most part you know I, I was only eating like 40 to 50 carbs per meal 
Sometimes I would snack throughout the day. Sometimes I wouldn't snack throughout the day. It all honestly just depended on the day. So then week 16, baby was the size of an avocado, still hadn't gained any weight. Uh, we had another ultrasound, heart rate was 152. He did have a little fluid on his kidneys, but they said it's normal for you know little boys, so they were just gonna watch it. Um, so he was measuring six ounces. Pretty much he was standing on his head, or I was on my head, whenever they were trying to do the ultrasound because we could not get a clear view of baby. He's very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but same thing, hip pain, uh, back pain, and he was moving a lot. But again, sugars were stable. Again, craving was Reese's. Now, when I say craving, I would only eat like one or two uh, just because I didn't want my sugar to spike. I'm still in the mindset of, you know, be careful what you're eating because it's going to spike. But I will tell you guys where I'm at now. I think I've hit 200 four times, four or five times. Something like that. So I am starting to go higher. It wasn't during the second trimester when it started to get all, you know, wonky, mainly during the third. Uh, so week 17, uh, my husband got to move, I got to feel him move. So that was like super cool to have my husband be able to feel him. Uh, I had really bad sciatic pain um, as well as back pain. So I could feel him moving around a lot, but like the back pain and the sciatic pain, which is, you know, like right here in your back, uh, it was bad. Like it was going down my leg. It was making my hips go numb. So I went and got a prenatal massage and I highly, 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 highly recommend to get a prenatal massage because it will make you feel so much better. Um, week 18, same thing, Reese's. So it's like the second trimester. I craved Reese's the entire second trimester. I'm still going on week 30, still want Reese's. Um, so heart rate was 147. Uh, kidney still had fluid on it. I had a bit of placenta previa. If you guys don't know what that is, I believe I mentioned it in my last video, but if you don't know what it is, it's basically where your placenta is blocking your, um, your cervix, which means if you were to deliver then, the placenta would come out before baby, which is not good. Um, so they were going to watch that. And then um, one of the maternal fetal me medicine specialists did say I was a rock star when it comes to managing my diabetes. He was like, the way you're eating the carbs, the way you're taking walks. And I will tell you guys, me and my husband took walks any day we could. So if it wasn't too hot or um, if it wasn't raining, we would take, you know, 10 to 30 minute walks a day. And I will say as a diabetic, you know, walks help your sugar, exercising helps your sugar but it really helps while you're pregnant as well. It helps keep your sugar stable um, just throughout the rest of that day. And, you know, even going into the day, to, like the next day, it'll help keep your sugar stable. So like, I highly recommend to take walks if you are able while you're pregnant, especially outside, get you outside, get you some fresh air. And it's just, it was always fun to take our dogs for a walk, you know, before we got bit by pit bulls. But it was always fun to, um, to take them and just, you know, Get outside a little bit for sure. Um, same thing, he's moving like crazy, bloated, headaches. I had really bad headaches for a while. We thought it was my sugar. Um, one thing about the second trimester that I did realize is Dexcom. Oh my goodness. So I love Dexcom. I'm still currently wearing Dexcom on my arm, but <laughs> uh, second trimester hit and it's like my Dexcom just went out of the woods. Like 40 to 60 points off. So I was doing a lot more finger sticks. I would say most of my sugars during the second trimester were finger sticks because I would do a fasting one. And then I would watch my Dexcom throughout the day. Like I'm glad I had it on the entire second trimester. Um, but at the same time, it wasn't very reliable. So I would have to carry my meter with me everywhere, which in general, if you're a diabetic um, and you are pregnant, I would recommend carrying a meter with you just because your Dexcom can, or your CGM if you're using a different one, um, can get a little bit wonky. So that's one of the things that I would never carry another meter with me ever since I've had Dexcom. And when I got pregnant, especially during the second trimester, I was like, I need to carry this meter in case I need a snack or in case it's wrong. Um, so highly recommend if you aren't carrying one during the second, tri during the second trimester to definitely start carrying one. Okay, went on a rant. Again, by week 18, still hadn't gained any weight. I was weighing around the same. Um, so then week 19, I didn't have a craving. The heart rate was 152. My blood pressure has been pretty phenomenal. Third trimester, 
it went low uh, at the beginning of the third trimester, but it's been like 114 over 67. Um, I had some vision issues, but I changed glasses and I don't know if you guys know this or not, but with pregnancy, your eyes will change, which pregnancy, everything changes in your body. Just so you know. <laughs> um, so I got new glasses because my, I want to say it was my left eye had gotten worse. I got new glasses and if you guys don't have glasses or if you've gotten a new prescription before, you know, your eyes can get like blurry to adjusting the new prescription. So that's what happened. But I ended up getting a blood pressure cup. Uh, it's the wrist one. It's not the watch, but it's just a wrist one that I do, you know, still check my blood pressure pretty often once, maybe twice a day, depending on how I feel. Um, but I did end up getting a blood pressure cup during the second trimester. Okay. So also, if you guys aren't aware in pregnancy, at least where I'm at, they ask you to do a 24 hour urine sample, essentially. So you have to collect your urine for 24 hours, especially being diabetic. They really, really, really want to check the protein in your urine. So if you're not pregnant or you're, you know, trying to become pregnant, just give you a heads up as a diabetic, they're really going to watch the protein in your urine. Um, so we found out on week 19 that I would be induced um in between 38 and 39 weeks because i am diabetic and my doctor said she doesn't like to let diabetics go um past 39 weeks which is totally fine with me i'm officially at the point where i'm just like i want them to bake a little bit longer but like i'm ready <laughs> i'm ready to meet them uh, so we got our nursery complete that week as well you know kind of same things congestion headaches back pain and i could feel him moving a lot again so week 20, um, no cravings again. He was the size of a banana and we had a maternal fetal medicine specialist appointment. So blood pressure was still good. 107 over 71. So they have been very, very, very pleased with my blood pressure throughout the entire pregnancy. Um, I did gain a pound. So I gained one pound and I honestly believe because my mother-in-law was here that entire week before and she cooked for us, but I did gain a pound. Um, his kidneys were back in range, so there was no fluid on his kidneys. The placenta had moved, but it was still covering. And my doctor had basically said, I'm losing hope that it will move, um, that she thought it would just stay there the entire pregnancy, meaning that we would go into a C-section when I was ready to deliver. Um, so then I had a cold a few times while pregnant in the second trimester. Um, the congestion got pretty bad. Nosebleeds have been really bad. Headaches, I mean, it's... Also springtime too, so you don't really know if it's springtime allergies or just pregnancy in general. But his heart rate was 142, so that was a good week. Um, as far as week 21, lots of movement. My husband could feel him move. My husband can really feel him move now because he moves all the time. Um, this is when my sugar started to get a little bit more stubborn. So I would have stubborn like high sugars. and. I know people have different definitions of what a high sugar is. Um, you guys know I am pretty well controlled. So when I say high sugar, I don't mean necessarily over 200. When I'm saying high sugar, I'm saying like 180 to 220-ish. I don't even think I've went to 220-ish this entire pregnancy. But uh, if it's hitting like 180 and it's taking a while to come down, and not just coming down like if I start moving or you know if I give myself some insulin, I become very impatient wanting it to come down. So this is kind of where my sugar started to um, get a little bit higher and started to become more insulin resistant. Um, so this week I basically put I'm over being pregnant. <laughs> um, but we had our family come down for Easter weekend, which is the weekend after that. So that was super exciting just to spend time with family and they all came to my house. So that was super cool. Um, as far as week 22, uh, heart rate was 127, my blood pressure 115 over 73, uh, he was one pound and four ounces, so he was in the 59th percentile, um, so I might turn comments off for this video, uh, just because what I'm about to tell you guys, I don't want to get in debates on YouTube, I don't want to get in debates in general about I told you guys I was going to wait and take the COVID vaccine um, until I delivered. So this is a week when I met with my specialist and I asked her about the COVID vaccine and she told me to definitely get it. The next day I got my first dose. So I have been fully vaccinated for 
I don't know, probably three-ish weeks now, maybe longer. Uh, probably longer than that. I don't know. But I've been fully vaccinated for a while now. Now, if you are waiting till after you have a baby and after you deliver to get the vaccine, that's your decision. If you choose not to get the vaccine at all, that's your decision. Uh, I'm not doubting y'all's decision on whether to get a vaccine or not to get a vaccine. Um, I'm just saying what my husband and I had thought and prayed over and really asked the doctors. I asked my specialist. I asked my endocrinologist. Uh, there's another doctor I asked too. I can't remember. Um, I want to say I asked my OB too. So it was an OB. It was the maternal fetal specialist and my endocrinologist, what they all thought while pregnant. And they had sent me stories. They had sent me studies. And we determined to get the COVID vaccine. So me and my husband are fully vaccinated. Um, most of my family are fully vaccinated. Um, so that is when I got my COVID vaccine. So again, I don't want to debate. I don't want to talk about if it's right or wrong. I, I got the Pfizer. Um, as far as side effects while pregnant, I will say the first one, I don't really remember much side effects on the first one. Your arm's really sore. I got it in my left arm. Um, so your arm was sore, but I didn't really feel bad. I think I got a little hot during the night. I got it around 2.30 and I got a little hot and you just feel tired. Um, and then my second dose, whew, whew, that one was the kicker. So my second dose, I had, I got it again around 2.30 um, and I took the morning off work the next day because, you know, people are saying side effects are pretty rough being pregnant on top of that I was like let's take the morning off and kind of just see how I feel um the second one hurt more putting it in my arm than the first one did and my arm was pretty much immediately sore from there out and I'm the kind of person when I get a vaccine I just start moving my arm like this because I know it's going to be sore so I'm like chicken winging it um trying to get it not to be sore but it was incredibly sore and if anything from the second one I would say body aches I had the worst body aches I think I've ever had with the flu. So I never had COVID while pregnant. We've been extremely care cautious while uh, COVID has been going on. So these body aches were terrible, like worse than when you had the flu. Other than that, uh, besides, you know, restless sleeping and a really sore arm, I didn't have it terribly as bad as like my husband. My husband got some pretty bad side effects. But then after, you know, 48 hours, I would actually say before that, so my symptoms didn't really kick in until after 24 hours, and that's when I got pretty sick um, with the body aches and stuff. But, you know, by the next day, so like maybe by like 30-ish, 35-ish hours, I was totally fine. My arm was back to normal. So if you do get it, that's your decision. If you don't get it, that's your decision as well. Okay. So that week I also still had a low placenta. So they didn't know if I would be able to, um, if the placenta was gonna move. So one of the things I noticed here too is that this week I started getting a little bit more carbier. So my meals were like 50s and 60 carbs and um, my certified diabetes educator recommends to stay at 40, 45 max. So this is when I really had to get more cautious of like counting carbs. And being diabetic, if you, like, I guesstimate, let's be real, I guesstimate carbs most of the time. I'm not actually reading the label every single time um, because that's exhausting. And if you do that, that's awesome. Congrats on you. I just, I don't want to read the labels every time. I feel like I'm good at guesstimating, but I feel like this is the week where I started not being as good as guesstimating on carbs. So I really had to, like, start reading labels again, which makes you feel like you're back to being, you know, step one of being a diabetic. Okay, went on a rant. Okay, so week 23. Um, so it took the nurse forever to get his heart rate because he was moving everywhere, but his heart rate was 142. Um, my sugars were just nuts. So they were going low, they were spiking, they were going low, they were spiking, they were staying high after spiking. Um, so you really had to do a lot of insulin adjustments. Um, so this is where the sugars really started to get more complicated. Uh, week 24, his heart rate was 143. Um, he wouldn't get his hands and his feet out of his face so we could get a good picture, but that's okay. Um, I did have some sugar in my urine this week, so I had to ask my maternal fetal medicine specialist about, you know, what was it? I wanna say I had like 100, maybe. Um, I can't remember. 
But anyways, I asked her and she said she expects it because I am a type 1 diabetic. Um, and it honestly just depends on your diet, which like I said, I wasn't counting carbs very good. Um, I told you guys I was trying to stay away from sweets. It didn't always happen <laughs> during the second trimester. It's still not happening during the third trimester, but I'm not like eating a lot of sweets. So I really had to watch what my diet was. And, uh, but she said she wasn't concerned. We were just gonna watch it over the next, you know, the next couple of times that I came through. Um, so we actually went on our baby moon that week too. Fantastic time. We went to Gatlinburg and that's probably why my, I, why I had sugar in my urine because we did not eat good. We ate out like 95% of the time. We took a weekend, went to Gatlinburg and it was just a great time to just get away, especially like during this whole COVID thing, just be able to literally get away from your home. Obviously we were wearing masks and, you know, taking precautions in that kind of way. But at the same time, just to get a cabin and, you know, just to get away from everything, it was awesome. Um, also this week he was breech. So if you guys don't know what breech is, it means he's head up instead of head down. So they said they were going to watch it, but with only being at week 24, they said they're going to flip several times. So they weren't super concerned about it. And they tested my A1C. And even though my sugars were kind of wacky and getting kind of high, my A1C, I think it was at the lowest it's ever been, which is at a 4.9. And that is the latest one that I've had. Um, I get another one checked in two weeks uh, just to make sure because I'm more insulin resistant now in the third trimester, they want to double check it. I don't think it's going to be like over a six, uh, but I do think it's going to go up some. Okay. What's also really cool about that week too is that my family got to feel him move. Um, my husband's mom, my mom, and my dad got to feel him move, so that was super cool. Um, week 25, we're back to craving Reese's, and the sugars were going high at night. So I've never really had a problem since I've been on a pump with my sugars going high. And I'm not saying like 180 plus, I'm saying like out of the range of pregnancy. So in pregnancy, after two, two hours after a meal, they want it below 120. So I was in like the 140s, 160 ranges at night. And we couldn't really figure out what was happening. I don't know if we had just adjusted lower rates the week before. And then my body was like, hey, <laughs> we need some more insulin at night. But I was like ranging in the 140s to 160. So we did have to correct that. So I'm on more insulin now. I want to say I'm on like 0.5 at night now. Or I might have been on 0.45. Um, but I'm still not on a lot of insulin at night. It's just throughout the day. I'm on more insulin now. Um, so this is the week where your, like, your hormones just skyrocket. So in pregnancy, you can be totally fine laughing and then you can be totally crying <laughs> because something didn't either go your way or because something happened or you saw something sad on TV. Um, so yeah, that was the week I, I cried a lot, but we made it through. Um, and then week 26, so I started to get an appetite back. I started to eat more junk food than I have allowed myself the entire pregnancy. So I craved buffalo wild wings, the medium sauce, and I got the traditional ones. And, oh my goodness, they were delicious. And then I also craved Oreos, and I, ah, I cannot believe I craved Oreos. I don't even eat Oreos. Like, they're fantastic and they're great, but I know if I eat them or if I get them, I will eat them, and that'll make my sugar go high. So I did crave Oreos, and my husband did get me some Oreos, but it was only like I need one a day or maybe two a day and that was it because Oreos do not agree with sugar. Um, I got to have my baby shower um, in Tennessee and that was a lot of fun. I also got to take maternity, professional maternity, oops, professional maternity photos. And oh my gosh, they are absolutely fantastic. I'll try to leave some at the end of this video, but oh my gosh, I'm in love with the pictures. She was fantastic and like, they're just as good as I imagined. Um, my sister got to feel him move, which is super cool. You know, back pain, hip pain, leg and foot pain. I have gotten a lot of leg cramps, especially the last ending of the second trimester and then the third trimester. So I've been eating um, bananas and, you know, drinking as much water as possible. Uh, my sugars were more normal, which is kind of crazy. So the weekend that I had like two cravings, uh, I actually had more normal sugars. So I, I believe that's the week I was taking lots of walks because I knew my sugar would go a little bit high. Um, and I also got my teeth cleaned that week. So one of the things they recommend in pregnancy too is to always just keep an eye on your teeth. 
because pregnancy can affect like your gums and your teeth and stuff. So I actually got to have my teeth cleaned and I was actually kind of scared because um, they have you on your, like, your back, but like they don't keep you on there very long. So I was like, you're not supposed to lay on your back while pregnant, but they know I was pregnant um, and they watched it obviously. Um, second trimester, week 27, I craved oats. So what's crazy is that in the first trimester, I craved oats as well, like before I started puking out my guts. I could only eat oats in the morning. And then ever since then, I haven't been able to eat oats. So I was back on the oats train again. So that was odd. And this is when the low blood pressure really started to get funky. So I have a blood pressure cup and I was just feeling off. And the best way I can describe it is it felt like a low blood sugar, but it wasn't like a low blood sugar that makes you shake, essentially. It was like you just feel super weak, like even putting your arm up to your chest to take your blood pressure was exhausting. So I checked it and I was at 88 over 40, which is pretty low. I am on a baby aspirin a day just because I am diabetic and diabetics typically have higher blood pressure. So I'm on that until week 36. Um, but I had a low blood pressure. So I called the nurse triage line and they were like, okay, you probably need to go into labor and delivery just to make sure that your blood pressure is right. Um, which for the most part, when I was in labor and delivery, everything was, my blood pressure was pretty stable. So it was about um, 90 over like 60 or something like that. And they don't really want you to go below 60 but because I wasn't super, super symptomatic, they weren't really worried. Um, one of the things they did tell me is to increase my electrolytes. So I have been drinking the Propel Zero Sugar Watermelon flavor, Propel Water. Um, I can't do Gatorade. I did a colonoscopy because my mom had colon cancer a year, maybe two years ago. And I ever since then, Gatorade, ugh. So if you are looking for something to increase your electrolytes, Propel, they have different flavors but the propel zero sugar if you're diabetic um water and that's the one my diabetes educator recommended is you know just be careful and use always the zero sugar so it doesn't spike your sugar so i've been drinking that one a day and that's it um so at the labor and delivery too the they monitor the baby so You've never been to labor and delivery because I was super confused on what happened. They put monitors on your stomach. Uh, there's two to check his heartbeat. And they said he was more active than a full term baby. <laughs> so he was all over the place. He hated those monitors. So um, they knew he was fine. I was good. His heart rate was 145. Um, also, we found out that week that he was in the 98th percentile for his belly size. So I mean, his belly is growing a lot and very fast. Overall, he's in the 80th percentile, so he's still doing well, but if he continues in like the 90s, he gonna be a big baby, more than likely a C-section. Um, my placenta had moved that week, which is just awesome. Um, so we are shooting for a vaginal delivery, depending on how big he is now. <laughs> because 98 percent up he was three pounds and two ounces so this baby's growing um overall it was just it's been a great trimester the second trimester um he's done fantastic i've done pretty good and then we got attacked by pit bulls and so i've been trying to heal from that i was able to have um my two moms come down my mother-in-law and my mom come down to just help us out with cleaning and cooking and helping so my husband wasn't doing everything. Um, we also got his nursery done, so that's complete as well. And we are full on, you know, we are on the home stretch. So I'll be 30 weeks in two days, which is just like so mind blowing. I'm almost 30 weeks and I am so excited. So right now we are looking to induce in between 38 and 39 weeks. If she says I can be induced at 37, I might be induced at 37 just because I'm kind of over it. I'm still wearing the pump on my stomach. I change um, the sides every time. I change my pump every other day. That's what they recommend with Omnipod while pregnant. I'm still wearing my Dexcom even though it, um, not always accurate. I will say it's probably been more accurate in the third trimester than it was in the second, which is kind of crazy. They usually say it's different. 
I'm on vitamin D, I'm on a prenatal, I am still taking a half a tablet of Unisum every night because if I go without it, I puke my guts out the next day. Uh, but other than that, we are doing well and we're so excited. So I thought I'd scoot back, show you guys a quick bump update on what this looks like. I hope to have a third trimester of one out before I deliver if that happens but stay tuned i'll keep you guys updated especially with insulin rates in the third trimester but i'm so excited to meet him i'm so excited to share this information with you guys if you are pregnant or trying to get pregnant or just want to learn about pregnancy and diabetes in general you can do it let me just say that again you can do it it's hard diabetes is a freaking full-time job but like to meet him it's gonna be so worth it okay so bump update here's the little baby there's my, my pump, but he's definitely growing. And we are so excited. I'm gonna put my maternity photos at the end of this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Bye guys.